Welcome to Mix Made Clear, where we break down microinvasive glaucoma surgery into bite-sized chunks so you can walk away with a much greater understanding and feel more MIGS confident. Today, in this part four video, we're going to talk about subconjunctival stent techniques and the device that performs them. By the way, my name is Dr. Constance Okeke, and I'm an Ivy League, Wilmer Eye, and Baskin Palmer trained glaucoma specialist and cataract surgeon. This Mix Made Clear six-part video series is supported through an unrestricted educational grant from New World Medical, Nova Eye Medical, and Sight Sciences. As we break down this topic, we will first quickly review the targeted structural anatomy and the mechanism of action of subconjunctival stent techniques. Then we'll discuss the available devices in this class, the Zen Gel Stent. For this device, we'll go over what it looks like, its key features, the mechanism of action, and how it works surgically. Finally, we'll discuss indications and contraindications to guide appropriate patient selection. Make sure to watch to the end to find out what we'll be discussing in the next video. So let's dive in. As an established MIGS adopter, I was actually a bit hesitant to adopt subconjunctival stents into my armamentarium. The main reason was because of my concern with bleb needling management and the potential disruption of my already busy private practice clinic. Over the years, I'd already reduced the amount of trabecolectomies I performed and increased MIGS procedures and tube shunts. But the reality was that I still wanted another resource for my challenging cases. Experiencing one too many secondary corneal edema to patients necessitating a DSEC or a physically taxing tube exposure shunt revision case made me decide to take the leap to embrace my journey with subconjunctival stents, starting with Zen. Now, over six years later, and after several reiterations of my Zen technique, I feel very grateful to have this tool for my patients, especially when I'm seeing functional blebs, IOPs in the low teens to single digits, and quiet eyes that were once extremely hyperemic and uncomfortable from the multiple topical medications. I am thrilled to help you better understand subconjunctival stents in this video and potentially help you to incorporate this tool into your practice. Lesson one, review of target anatomy. Let's begin with a quick review of the targeted anatomy involving subconjunctival stents. Different from the other MIGS procedures we have discussed thus far in the MIGS Made Clear series, we will discuss a procedure that creates a bleb and the angle plays a less crucial role in the placement of the device. As illustrated in this image, the key structures in the subconjunctival outflow system are conjunctiva, the thin transparent membrane that covers the white part of the eye or sclera, subconjunctiva, the tissue layer just beneath the conjunctiva which can contains blood vessels and plays a role in the drainage of aqueous humor, tenon's tissue, the fibrous connective tissue surrounding the sclera that provides structural support, the sclera, or the white part of the eye which forms the outer layer of the eyeball, and the anterior chamber, the fluid-filled space between the cornea and the iris that contains aqueous humor. A solid understanding of anatomy is essential for performing this procedure correctly and achieving the best possible outcomes. Lesson 2. Mechanism of Action The outflow pathway that is created created with subconjunctival stents bypasses the tr conventional outflow system, which, as we have covered, consists of the trabecular meshwork, Schlem's canal, and the collector channels. The subconjunctival stent placement sits with one tip of the stent in the anterior chamber, tunneled through the sclera, with the other end situated in the subconjunctival space. This position allows aqueous humor in the anterior chamber, which is in an area of higher resistance, to flow through the hollow stent to the subconjunctival space where there is less resistance. The aqueous then gets reabsorbed by the surrounding tissues and thus allows for effective IOP lowering. Lesson 3, the MIGS device in this class and how it works. Now let's go over the only available FDA approved device that utilizes a subconjunctival stent mechanism which is the Zen gel stent. The Zen stent is 6 millimeters in length with a 45 micron lumen diameter. It's about the length of an eyelash. It's made of durable, biocompatible, tissue conforming gelatin that becomes flexible after implantation. It comes in a preloaded disposable injector with a 27 gauge double beveled needle. There are two ways of approaching the placement of the stent, ab interno through a small corneal incision, which is the on-label approach, and ab externo where the conjunctiva is pierced or incised open and the stent is placed through the sclera and into the anterior chamber. Further, within those two approaches, there are variations of technique which all have the potential to allow for good outcomes. A popular concept now is to to create a good pocket surrounding the tip for a diffuse blood free of tenon's tissue that can clog the 
tip. Let's watch an ab internal approach with an air zen technique in surgical action. After lidocaine gel placement on the conjunctiva, I inject air into the subconjunctival space to delineate it from the tenon's tissue. This is followed by mitomycin C, which helps prevent fibrosis and scarring around the tip. This is followed by viscoelastic, which then further helps to delineate the cleared space or pocket for the zen tip to go. Then the zen injector tip is inserted into the anterior chamber through the scleral wall into the subconjunctival space and released into position. The pocket surrounding the stent tip is checked for free mobilization. Now, there is also the ab external approach, which can also be very effective. I have found use of this approach for patients who have had previous corneal surgery where I want less manipulation in the anterior chamber to protect the corneal endothelium. You can watch an ab external zen approach by clicking the card link above. Now, an ideal patient for zen gel stent is someone with an open angle who has refractory glaucoma, including cases where previous laser or surgical treatment like other MIGs or other traditional glaucoma surgery did not work, including cases of pseudo exfoliative or pigmentary glaucoma with open angles that are unresponsive to maximal medical therapy. The conjunctiva should be freely mobile in the desired location of the Zen. The Zen gel stent is contraindicated in angle closure glaucoma where the angle has not been surgically opened when there is previous glaucoma shunt, valve, or conjunctival scarring or pathologies in the target quadrant when there's active inflammation or active iris neovascularization when there is an anterior chamber intraocular lens or intraocular silicone oil or vitreous in the anterior chamber. So let's recap. Today we reviewed the subconjunctival stent mechanism of action, the targeted anatomy, the unique features of the Zen gel stent, various surgical approaches, and we discussed some points to help with patient selection. Now before we wrap up, here's what I'd like you to do next to get the most out of this Mix Made Clear series. First, subscribe to the Eye Glaucoma YouTube channel so you don't miss any videos in the series. Share this video with other eye care providers who might also benefit from the knowledge. Check out the resources below, including guides on adopting MIGS and understanding real world MIGS outcomes, as well as getting a sneak peek on what's to come with the MIGS Made Clear video series. And don't forget to grab a copy of the award-winning The Glaucoma Guidebook, expert advice on maintaining healthy vision for practical tips on managing glaucoma. This is a great resource for patients. Finally, if you have experience with subconjunctival stent techniques, or if you're interested in learning more, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Your feedback helps us to continually refine the content to make it as informative and as relevant as possible. Whether you're managing difficult to treat open angle glaucoma or looking for a technique that can significantly reduce eye drop burden, subconjunctival stents offer a less invasive option than traditional glaucoma surgery that helps patients maintain healthy eye pressures. I hope this breakdown clarified the advantages and applications of subconjunctival stent techniques, as well as boosted your confidence in selecting the right tools for your patients. Thank you for watching, and remember, every step we take in understanding MIGS brings us closer to improving glaucoma care. And if you want to further enhance your MIGS learning, watch the next episode where we'll be discussing endocyclophotocoagulation and micropulse laser techniques. Let's make MIGS clear one technique at a time. This video was brought to you through the AGE Initiative and eye glaucoma.